Hello everybody, back with another video. Uh, this one's called The Story of the Photos That Show Apollo 8 Was Fake. And it's actually looking at a video that was called Earthrise, The Story of the Photo That Changed the World. And I'll put a link to the original video. I've obviously taken little snippets of the video and I've put in breaks for me to talk about certain things that I don't believe were real and also I've tried to use as little as I can of the video just in terms of fair use and try and avoid copyright. So uh, let's uh, move on and let's get in to this video. You three gentlemen were the first men to escape from the earth so to speak. Is there, I'm sure you're going to be asked this over and over again, but I think everybody wonders about it. Is there some kind of a psychological wrench when you see the Earth actually receding, when you're alone in the universe and the only spot in the whole visible universe is an Earth which is so distant that it looks like, as I believe one of you said, like a quarter or something of that sort? Is there some kind of a feeling where, which might seriously affect people who are not like you, trained, experienced? In other words, if you had a passenger aboard who were not so busy, would he really feel a wrench? You just got to laugh clearly. Uh, they didn't have a script for this. Uh, anybody that would have done that, I'm sure, would have still been hyper about it. And you would have an answer straight away to that question. Clearly, these don't, guys don't. Whether it's deliberate, I don't know. But they clearly don't have a script for this particular little bit. But let's get on with the video. Space, a final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Earth was the only thing in the entire universe of all this inky black void. The Earth was there with a beautiful blue hue to it. The blue marble, that's, that's what it looked like, a blue marble, a blue agate. There was essentially zero interest in images of Earth from space. Nobody told me to take a picture of the Earth. I didn't think about it either. NASA interest was focused on the mission. And particularly Borman was kind of anti-photography. It was just one more thing to divert the crew to actually completing the mission, which was to go around the moon and get back alive. We were all on the Earth, so we all knew about the Earth when they wanted photographs of something that was unusual, close-ups of the far side of the moon, and the Earth was strictly secondary. Looking back at the Earth, I'm thinking, man, that's pretty. I wonder what the right f-stop would be. Well, I always took three or four. We had what today would be a very rudimentary uh, uh, TV system, a, a camera. This transmission is coming to you approximately halfway between the moon and the Earth. Okay, now we're coming up on the view. We really want you to see us, the view of the Earth. And if you'll uh, break for just a minute, uh, Bill's going to put on the large lens. So we'll be right so make a note, this is with the standard lens because he's about to put on the telephoto lens, which means it's got a bigger magnification. So when he puts that lens on, if we see inside the cabin, it's obviously going to be either blurred because it's too close or magnified or both. So remember this and we'll take a look later. Right back with you. Houston, we're now showing you a view of the Earth through the telephoto lens. 
You don't have a lens cover on there, do you? No, we checked that. Matter of fact. So here we go. This is with the telephoto lens, and he's about to put it to the window to film the Earth. Now, does this image look uh, much larger magnification than the last one? Well, let's take a look. I think the answer's obvious. It's, uh, if anything, the image is sm smaller, so it's the same lens. There's no telephoto lens being fitted there at all. But let's move on. There's a picture. didn't work all that well at first uh, but eventually people on the ground were able to see something that that resembled an illuminated sphere called the earth and uh, it wasn't it wasn't high definition by any means and just hold her, hold her steady it's really looking good i was wrong on things at times and i was terribly wrong on the television i didn't even want to take a television camera with us that was stupid on my part. Now that's really strange because I don't actually see something that resembles a ball earth. I see a dog or a fox in that image. Do you see it? Because it's clear to me. Let's take a look. Clearly this is one big piss take. And it just happens to be a creature of the night, a fox. In that photo, it's clear as day to me. And what organisation likes owls and foxes? and creatures of the night, I wonder. The television uh, brought back the realities of what we were doing to the American people, with the people of the world. Yeah, you can say that again, conning them with this fake crap. My job was to make sure the spacecraft kept running. You know, by the way, if I had any time, I, would, I was the photographer as well. I was the guy stuck with the camera. We've been spending all these revolutions looking at the moon. Then as we come around this non-inviting place, we look up and there's the Earth. It's 240,000 miles away. It was small enough you could cover it with your thumbnail. And everything we held dear, our families, our country, everything we held dear was back on that blue planet. That was a sense of awe. How in the world could this little ball, you know, exist in this vast universe of nothing? Now make a note of this image because another one is going to appear which is a higher resolution. I don't know what camera they use there, but we'll compare the two images. Wow, is that pretty? Now here's the new image, and if we look at that next to the previous image, we'll see a bit of a difference. Can you see anything there that there's any resemblance. Well, I can see an R and a C on the one, but the cloud formation and everything, even if it was not such a high resolution, it's just not the same. It's just not the same at all. We were all awestruck by uh, the difference, the beauty of the Earth and its color against the blackness of space. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. We had never had any discussion of uh, taking an Earthrise picture before the flight or during the flight. And yet when we came over the moon on this flight, we looked up and there was this beautiful blue ball in the, in the background. It all struck us immediately. Get that picture. This is the best picture we've got of the whole flight. I personally thought that everybody would like to have that view as we did to see the Earth as it really is. I believe all three of us had an emotional reaction to seeing the Earth. The dearest things in life were back on, back on the Earth. My family, my wife. What I uh, keep imagining is if I'm a lonely traveler from another planet, what I think about the Earth from this altitude whether I think it'd be inhabited or not. Well, I'm just kind of curious uh, whether I would land on the blue or the brown part of the Earth. You better hope we land in the blue part. 
Now what I've done here is I've made a collage of all the different images of the so-called ball earth or the blue marble as he called it um, appeared throughout that video so uh, we've got down here we've got our uh, very clear picture of a fox and we've got this uh, image here which was the one with the r and the c on it which was meant to be the same as this one which clearly isn't then we've got uh, this one this one this one and this one they're all absolutely completely different uh, no similarity whatsoever it almost looks like there's numbers here doesn't it look at look at this this just doesn't look like anything you see when you fly an aeroplane and you're looking down at the clouds it looks nothing like it and they'll say oh it's a bigger scale it's a bigger scale is it this is just fake bullshit this is in my mind anyway and uh all the way through they were talking about uh, they never thought it was uh, important to photograph the earth and it wasn't in the plan now you take three guys that have lived with their feet on the ground looking up at the sky being able to see the moon maybe who knows half the nights of the year and they can stand and look at that then they are allegedly blasting away from the earth and viewing the earth wouldn't you want to look at something you've never seen before wouldn't you be absolutely transfixed on that and not even think about the moon you can look at that i can look at that through my well when it's not cloudy and raining like it is most of the time here i can get a perfect image of that on my uh, high zoom camera um i wouldn't be that interested but you're coming away from the earth and you're not planning to take photographs of it and then you end up with all this bullshit and this one here which gives the whole game away where they're really taking the piss uh it's obvious to me this is bullshit i will make a video as well looking at the apollo uh, mission in terms of getting away from the earth using gravitational theory and what kind of velocities they were doing how important it would be that they knew exactly where they were to pinpoint accuracy exactly what the velocity was we'll have a look at all that uh, in the next video that i do but i'm still doing some work on that but uh, hopefully that one will be uh, quite good so uh, let's just before i go on there were two images taken and there was this one of the earth right with the the rc on it here and i just looked up what the orientation of the shadow on the ball earth was and it was parallel to the uh, moon surface here and this was the higher resolution one that was shown here's the moon surface and for some reason it was at a different tilt now it's got the same reference how on earth did that happen you can look back at the video i will put the link to the original video so you can watch that as well but um fake 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 that's all i'll say and i'll also say uh, thank you for watching thank you for listening and goodbye